the purpose for this briefing, as you've seen, we've posted on our website five officer body cameras that were in and around Elmwood Avenue at Bissell a week ago Sunday. The investigation with the Attorney General, who you don't see here in the state, please continue with the accident reconstruction. With the interviewing of witnesses, we still call out for anyone that may have witnessed themselves uh, the crash to come forward, call the Providence Police, call the Rhode Island State Police, or call the Attorney General's office. Or if anyone possesses any video that shows the actual impact of that crash, please reach out to us. We want to do a thorough investigation and we have not yet received any video of the point of, of, comp, point of crash um, at, that, at that scene. So as, as you've seen, the five uh, body cams that were pushed out and what the Providence police officers did and our uh, rescue folks and our EMTs that came in on an engine ladder to provide assistance. Um, this is more for pushing out what we have and we're gonna continue to do that. As the mayor and the colonel and the attorney general has said that what we have, we will share with the public. This is gonna be comprehensive, thorough, and transparent, understanding that we have not yet completed the criminal end of things yet. That's a priority. How he was injured, Jamal was injured, is a priority of this investigation, and we're gonna to continue to get as much as we can possibly get so we can show independently as much as we have independent evidence showing what led up to the crash and the subsequent injuries of Jamal. I'll open it up to any questions, understanding that there is some, um, some of that video. I may not be able to respond back specifically, but I'll do the best I can, understanding I don't have answers to how he was injured and I don't have some answers because it's still being investigated. Uh, what you see from watching the body cam video is exactly what uh, you all see. The police officer involved in the crash, Officer Andres, you see him coming out of his vehicle and attending to Jamal. And the four other su subsequent officers in their body cams, both male and female, uh, responding to and rendering aid and processing the scene of that crash. That's what I see. There's, there, there's no uh, video on the body cams that show the crash. Stephen. Can you explain the uh, reasoning behind the 30 second delay on the Axon body camera series? Yeah, so uh, this technology with the body cams, <clears throat> it's constantly recording, but rebuffering every 30 seconds. So even when it's off, so the camera gets turned on, you engage the camera by tapping on the body cam, right? So when I say it, it's on, it's the engagement of that body camera. And so when an officer hits that body camera button twice, it automatically begins recording audio, but it catches the preceding 30 seconds of video. And so you hear 30 seconds of video, and then the audio comes on. Actually, when that officer tapped is when that audio begins, but the technology captures the 30 seconds of video preceding the, the engagement. Just up, wait, wait, just following up, can you actually explain why we chose to blur Jamal's face in the videos? I mean, is that because we know who he is? Not sure, like uh, and mean for, for his privacy and the privacy of the family. Yes, sure. Sure. Looking at all the videos, including the ones that have already been released, uh, and comparing it to the policy handbook with respect to chases, there seemed to be some inconsistency with lights being on and so on and so forth. 
you mentioned a criminal investigation. Is there an ongoing internal investigation that will look into possible violations of policy? And is that limited to just Officer Anders? Are there other police vehicles and officers that are involved in possibly creating the ultimate situation? Yeah, so the, the, that's all inclusive. So you have a, the criminal end of whether or not there's criminal liability. There's also things in that video that we need to address administratively um, and without identifying because we haven't gotten all the answers to all those questions yet. But yes, we're gonna look at whether it was a pursuit and if it was, if there's any violations of the pursuit policy, we're gonna look at a body cam engagement and whether or not the officers should have engaged their body cam or not and the, the response to aid also is is it appropriate as you see on the body cam and also understanding the narcan decision i'm not defending it i'm just telling you that what's in the officers minds but yeah there will be some administrative review and some administrative accountability just to follow up on that, you mentioned last week that it was an escort, not a pursuit. Is that still kind of the formal way that this is being investigated? We're, look, we're looking at what that is versus what it isn't, and what we asked, what, what we were doing and why we were doing it. Is there more footage that you have not released? There's no more footage that, <laughs> there is not any additional body cam footage for Elmwood at Bissell. We have body cam footage hours before uh, that were not released. There's a lot of that and we'll eventually release those as well. Yeah, and the point as we went there and officers may have gotten out of their vehicles and engaged in body cam, so. Yeah, hold, hold on and then I'll get into you. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's more questions. This is a question about what's happening now. Um, there's a flyer circulating about a potential purge in Providence in the aftermath. Have you seen this flyer and what's going on about that? Uh, we have and we're monitoring it. So. I'm sorry. Any other details? Will there be more police detail this weekend? Perhaps? Look, as we have protesters coming here or anywhere in the city, we monitor it and we'll be prepared as much as we can. So we've, we've seen that and hopefully I just ask anyone that's angry over this case or any other case, um, please do it peacefully whenever you protest and we'll be there as much as we can to make it safe. You know, violence has no place, and we hope that it's not violence, although the posting is troubling. Yes. What about the photo from the moped and the police cruiser? Can you tell us if the guy hit the, the moped? Can you release that photo? Um, that's a part of what we're really concentrating on, the state police are concentrating on. Why and so, now? Because it's transparency. Hear me out. So that's a, they haven't come to any definitive decisions about how the accident occurred and what may have touched uh, what other vehicle. That will be all released uh, at this point. It's still under investigation by the accident reconstruction experts. So I know you want as much as you can, but we don't want to disrupt what we're trying to do with the Attorney General's office and the state police at that very question. But it's going to be sooner rather than later. Yes. Is the mayor, the mayor wants to take a question? Sorry, you just answered. Yes, no, I'll call the mayor. I have a question for Mayor Loza, sure. if you don't mind. Mr. Mayor, um, what, what do you learn by watching this additional footage released today that prior, that maybe, that you didn't know prior to seeing this information today? So I want to just step back and begin the way that I began each one of these. Um, you know, we're here because a young man is in, very difficult um, condition in the, um, in the hospital right now. And our thoughts go out to his family and uh, we all pray for a full and, uh, and, um, and quick recovery. Uh, with respect to your question, you know, I've seen, I've seen these videos. Uh, you know, I don't know how much uh, additional light they shed um, over the other videos that we, that we have seen, at least for, for that incident. But as the commissioner mentioned, you know, we're investigating every aspect of this, uh, what led to it, and then, and then the aftermath. The priority right now is the criminal end of the investigation. Um, and once that is complete, 
You know, we're making a list of every single incident that we have to look at at an, at an administrative level, and we'll be uh, addressing every single one of them in turn. So, you know, at this point, you know, it's too early and it's speculative um, to, to comment one way or the other, but I do want to reassure everyone here and everyone and everyone in the public that we're going to do a full investigation here. And by full, that means not just looking at that actual, that actual moment, um, but looking at everything that led to it and that came afterwards. And then the other piece is the transparency, which is as important as anything else. You know, we want to share with you as much as we can as early as we have it. And we've also proactively invited independent set of eyes to be a part of this process. So that's a commitment that I've, that I've made and I will continue to make and to make sure that as much as possible, not only is it a professional, thorough, complete investigation, uh, but it's transparent with the public so the, uh, so the public has all the information that was used internally to reach their conclusions. Sí. Eh, bueno, lo que dije es de que eh, para comenzar lo más importante es eh, recordar de que estamos acá porque un joven de nuestra comunidad está en el hospital con heridas muy, muy, uh, muy serias. Y más que nada, eh, nuestras oraciones están con su familia y le deseamos una recuperación total y, y ojalá que sea lo más pronto posible. Eh, con eso dicho, eh, mi, um, eh, mi rol en todo esto siempre ha sido asegurarle al público de que vamos a tener una, eh, vamos a tener una investigación completa y transparente, completa y profesional con cada aspecto de esto que se investigue. No solo el momento donde hubo, eh, eh, donde, eh, donde fue eh, el incidente, pero también todo lo que lo llevó a ese, a ese punto y también lo que vino después. La investigación con los asuntos eh, potencialmente criminales, pero también a los asuntos ad administrativos. Y finalmente, eh, el compromiso que tengo yo con la comunidad entera es asegurarte que este proceso también sea lo más transparente posible. Y por eso es de que eh, nosotros hemos invitado a otros ojos independientes, al fiscal general y también eh, al, a la policía estatal, para que sean parte de esta investigación. Lo más importante es asegurarle a todos de que va a ser una eh, investigación profesional y completa y que también le vamos a dar toda la información al público que tengamos nosotros. For them to get there because you can hear in the video there seemed to be some sort of frustration or some confusion with the address so um, my question for both of you is one was there confusion and how long did it take and also what do you have to say to people in this community when they call 911 and they expect a response team and you can't even get the right address it seems like sure so uh, the, the the right address was provided because of the Providence police called it in now you hear some subsequent conversations with officers that are coming from either another district or uh, wasn't familiar. And so I can assure you that our dispatch knew exactly where we were. And then when we called for rescue early on, the rescue was dispatched. When you see the engine pull up, those are EMTCs. Those are people that are trained to be in a rescue and they start providing some aid there. I don't know the, the time in which exactly the EMTs arrived on scene from dispatch. I don't have that time. But I can tell you at, 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 at scenes in which seconds, you know, both matter and it feels like you're waiting an awful long time for a rescue to come. Once the EMTs were on the scene, they start administering, and then the rescue subsequently comes. I'll get you the time frame because we have it. I just don't have it with me. Steve's point from one earlier. Yes, sir. So, does do these videos tell you anything? Do they get you any closer to a conclusion of what happened? Look, the, these videos uh, speak for themselves, and. Does it, no, it doesn't show the crash and it doesn't provide us, you know, what, uh, what happened preceding the arrival of those officers. Of course, it doesn't because they came afterwards. It's, it's helpful as independent evidence, audio and, and video, as to the scene and the subsequent, um, 
you know, the subsequent actions of our police officers. So is, it is helpful, but it doesn't provide what we're all looking for, and that's what we're focused on. My second part of that is the subsequent part. You know, Jamal's mother told me last week that that's really what concerned her. She said that he felt, she felt that he was pulled like a rag doll. Were you concerned by that part of the video? Look, when I saw it, I was concerned, um, but again, that, you know, the hearing from the officer in which we will as to his rationale and when you hear so the first video that was pushed out by the young man that was concerning and then this adds a perspective of what he was trying to do and i'm not going to speculate he's going to have to respond to why he did that what might have been the rationale you know the bike was on his leg and he was pulling him away from that bike or that so there's a lot of speculation and the officer will have to respond to what his thought was and what would the time in which he pulled him and those kinds of things. So can I have a question for the chief? Chief, you can hear them discussing the stop sign. Could, based on what you've seen in the video, what, what is, could you take us through the stop sign and here it is on Jamal and then it, it would seem, is it possible that the stop sign is what caused the injury to his head? Very possible, all that is in question, all that is in play. It's very similar to an investigation we'll do on any front in the Providence Police Department. It's all processing of information. There's a lot, there's witness statements, there's verbal accounts, there's video, there's surveillance video, there's body one camera video, and, and all of it is going to transparently come out in the end. So it, it would be an injustice and, and not fair to the investigation to all individuals to give their opinion as to what happened. We need all the information and make a concrete final response to what we believe happened. The car that pulled out from, the cruiser that pulled out from Bissell Street stops and then continues forward. Do you, why was that officer doing that? Was he trying to stop the moped and did that contribute at all to the crime? Again, I'm gonna stand by it, all part of this investigation with the stop sign and the injury. And Steve. The young man who was, had the cell phone seemed to be treated pretty poorly by the two police officers mm -hmm. he interacted with. In fact, he was ordered onto the sidewalk and then yelled at when a police car almost ran him down on the sidewalk and told him to get out of the way. And they were both very abrupt and like strong with him. And I didn't know if there was any reason or if they thought, thought there was anything wrong with what he was doing or if there was any reason that he present in any way that made them feel that he had to be treated that way. So again, I can tell you, we, we show up to a lot of scenes that are chaotic, there's a lot of confusion. We try to gain control of the scene, uh, and as was stated by the commissioner uh, at the end of this investigation, the focus of this investigation is the injury to the young man and whether or not the vehicle hit the bike. Everything else will be part of the investigation, uh, and we'll certainly look at that internally like we do many of our events, whether we can do something better, different training, and uh, if need be, will there be some sort of internal discussions with individuals on that scene? Yes, of course, we okay, always do that. Officer, can you confirm that the video we're talking about when the officer, you could hear him getting a little abrupt and he said he actually says no, no one hit them, no one hit him with his car. Was that Andreas in that video saying that? That's gonna I'm, be the last question, okay? I, I'm not sure if that was him, I'm not sure. Steve, uh, we have Steve. I feel it was the commissioner who last week told us that you anticipate you would have a preliminary investigation within two weeks. Does that still hold? It does. So we're midway there. We're midway there, yeah. Uh, probably within a week we'll have the preliminary accident reconstruction report by the state police uh, in conjunction with the Providence Police accident reconstruction uh, specialist as well. And, and, of course, and of course the attorney general. How do you anticipate you'll convey that? Uh, like we've conveyed this and others, uh, we will notice uh, the media and there'll be a briefing.